morning, my friends. This is Angie Stewart, and we are here another Sunday morning at Conscious Living Spiritist Group. You are welcome. We are going to have another great lecture to continue helping us to connect with the spirituality, with uh, ourselves, and also with our friends, because we are still not uh, open in the physical situation, but we are always open here in the internet. This is a wonderful tool that helped us so much throughout this uh, pandemic time, and soon we will be able to be back together. This is very good. Let me open up the chat. So if you were listening to us right now, you can start putting your comments. And uh, when our friend starts the lecture, please put your questions and we will be able to go through all of them. So while our friends are coming, I would like to do a reading of this beautiful book, Our Daily Bread. And uh, the lesson I chose today is 119. So it starts like this. Always be of assistance. Then Paul answered, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? It is in Acts 21, 13. It constitutes one of the most dramatic passages in the Acts of the Apostles, the one in which Paul of Tarsus is preparing to confront the testimonies that awaited him in Jerusalem. In the heroic soul of the fighter, not a shadow of hesitation exists. His spirit, as usual, is ready. But his companions are crying and lamenting. And from the sensitive, valiant heart of the warrior of the gospel flows his painful questions. In spite of the serene energy that controlled his vigorous organization, Paul felt the lack of courageous friends like himself. The companions that were following him were sincerely ready for the sacrifice. However, they did not know how to manifest the sentiments of a faithful soul. It is because the crying and lamenting have never helped in difficult moments. Whoever cries around a friend in a precarious situation, position, disorganizes such a friend's resistance. Jesus shed tears in the Garden of Olives when he was alone, but in Jerusalem, under the weight of the cross, he begged the kind ladies who helped him to eliminate their painful tears. On the dawn of a resurrection, he asks Magdalene to clarify the motive for her tears at the gravesite. This lesson is of a great significance for all students. If a beloved soul is caught in a tempest for a long time, do not fall into useless desperation. The complaints do not resolve problems. Instead of tears and laments, get close to him and extend your arms. Very beautiful message as always. This book is really a blessing. And when we think about this, it reminds me also of Chico Xavier. Because uh, sometimes people ask him things, oh, I feel so bad about something I, meet, I did in the past. And Chico Xavier said, do not lament your past, your back. Work on your future. Improve yourself. So from now on, do something to improve yourself, to help others. Do not stay in the tears for the past, but work in a better future. And it has to be like that. Exactly the, mes the message that it tells us. So now I would like to invite all of you for a brief prayer, and then we can bring uh, our guest of today. 
God, our mother and father, thank you so much for bringing us together in this beautiful morning. Thank you so much for helping us to connect with our guardian angels, with the enlightened spirits that protect conscious living. Thank you so much for the presence of our dear friend, Flavio. We ask the enlightened spirits to guide him, inspire him, so he will be able to show and demonstrate to us his studies and we will all benefit from it. And at this moment, I would like also to ask for good vibrations to be sent to our friends that are not here at this moment, or to the ones that will be listening to this lecture later on. Thank you so much. And please stay with us now and always. So be it. Very good, my friends. I'm going to introduce you now to Flavio Zanetti. Flavio is a good, good friend. I don't even know how many years I, I know Flavio, but it's a lot of time, a lot of time. And the Flavio is from the Allan Kardec Spiritual Society of Massachusetts. So hello, Flavio. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Angie. How are you? Good morning. Yes. I love your energy. We are similar. Always. <laughs> Always a good energy, right? That helps. Exactly. Super happy to have you here with us. And the, your lecture is wonderful. So tell us the title. So the title is Divaldo Franco, A Messenger of Peace. Exactly. That's what we're talking about today or this morning. Yes, yes, really, really nice, especially now that the, all of us, we know Divaldo Franco celebrated 95 years old, a few yep. weeks ago, so it's really, really wonderful. So Flavio, it's a pleasure to have you here with us, and uh, all my friends, uh, if you were here and you listened to Flavio's lecture and you want to ask questions, put in the chat, so Flavio will have some minutes to answer in the end. Flavio will be in the background. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Thank you for the warm introduction. Uh, good morning, folks, uh, if you're joining us live. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, if you're joining us through the recording. It's a great honor and pleasure, once again, to be uh, with some, you know, esteemed friends from Conscious Living, right? Hopefully, we'll be able to have this opportunity to uh, get together soon in person as things start to reopen again back up. Uh, but before we start, folks, I'd like for us to... Uh, Keep our thoughts raised to our guardian angels, to our benefactor spirits. May they continue to really bring peace to your hearts, enlightenment to our minds, so we can really pass the message that we've prepared with so much care and tender, so you guys can benefit from it as well. As uh, uh, Angie mentioned, today is a very special morning, or this morning is very special, not only because we've already decided to spend some time here together as friends, right? Studying the gospel, studying the message, studying spiritism, but also because the month of May, May 5th, to be more precise, we've just celebrated Divaldo's 95th birthday, right? again, 95 years of age. And the man is still strong, still working, still producing. So our goal here for the next uh, 45-ish minutes is to really take a, I invite you to this journey to see a little bit about his life, his accomplishments, some of the things that he's gone through, and then maybe serve us. Well, I'm sorry day. to... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the microphone is having some issues and everybody on the chat is, is saying that they are having the crackling noise. If you can try a different way. We can change a different microphone. Yeah, if you, if you could change no problem. the see. microphone, let's try. Um, let's try in a different way. So my friends, even with Is technical okay? issues, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Let me hear. Can you guys hear me okay now? Is it I done? think it's good now. Let's try again. Right, Thank you. So as I was saying, uh, not only is the uh, this morning a very special one because we all decided to get together here as you know friends, but also because we're gonna go over some of the uh, the life facts from our dear Divaldo. And our aspiration, our goal here is that some of these things may serve as motivation for us to 
keep on reading his works, keep on contributing, keep on helping, right? Uh, and, and all the works that he's done, thank you, I got some, uh, some messages on the chat. Thank you so much for the feedback. Again, folks, uh, let's uh, let's go right into the uh, the topic here. And the, the, the title is Devalo Franco, a messenger of peace. But this is a quote that I got from a very famous Brazilian speaker that says, well, Devalo is one of the greatest spiritist mediums and speakers of all times. His prolific work has touched so many people throughout the world in so many different languages, in so many different ways, that would be impossible for us to measure or to show some data around it. But the message that I'm trying to convey here is that his impact to humanity is much broader, much more vast than we can ever imagine how much so. So that being said, how everything started, let's just uh, take a little road trip or maybe a, a ferry trip on uh, history lane here. So Vivaldo was born on May 5th, as I said, 1927. So for those of you who love math, he's 95 years old. In five more years, right, if he continues living, he'll, be, he'll complete his 100th birthday. He was born in Fred Santana, which is on the countryside of the Bahia state of Brazil, where he's considered one of its most illustrious sons. So you see down in the slide deck that he's gotten so many accolades, so many recognition, both from Brazil, locally and beyond, worldwide, that uh, this really makes Zimbabwe a very special uh, human being, nevertheless. When he was only five years old, or five years of age, he started to really show and to demonstrate some signs of clairvoyance and clairaudience, which means he was able to see and talk to some of the uh, imaginary friends, but those are not imaginary at all. Those are you know, friends from the spiritual world that were down playing with him. In the same way that he continued in that, right? He continued having his, uh, uh, oops, I think there's a microphone issue again. Folks, I don't know what's going on. It's going to try to do the microphone. I hope you can see me. You know, but let's see, let's just keep on going. Like so, so let's able to really see these folks. Audio go back at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've, I've tried every, every different microphone. Uh, might not be the microphone, I guess. Maybe it's a stream yard. I can try to log back in if that works. Let me try that. Angie, let me try to log back in. And then we'll see if that gets better. Okay. Be right back. Okay, this is such a beautiful lecture. I sincerely hope he can log log back in and and not ha not have the issues with the microphone. And uh, you know, sometimes we have lots of issues. He was having issues with the PowerPoint, and then he fixed the PowerPoint. So let's hope uh, it will work, and he will join us back to continue. Let's see. Is back. Let's hope. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay, it's Let's good. It, it, it seems it gets bad, bad later, but it's good. Yeah, Let's I, I try a different browser altogether now. So I'm joining. I'm joining not only from uh, Firefox but from Chrome. So hopefully that uh, that does it. We'll see. So uh, as I was saying, folks, uh, Givaldo is really considered a humanitarian in so many instances all over the world. He's got so many accolades and uh, he's starting to really show his mediumship capabilities at a very early age, about roughly five years, of, five years of age, where he was able to communicate, talk and play with some of the friends, some of the spiritual friends that would come down and uh, spend time with him. Divaldo had a chance to be introduced to spiritism after his brother's passing, he started to develop some, some conditions and somebody came in to assist and gave him you know, the spirits book and he started really getting in touch with spiritism. So obviously, as we're suggesting here, Duvalu is one of the most prolific mediums of all times. I think it'd be important for us to maybe touch a little bit upon mediumship, what that is, 
so we can really understand some of the capabilities and what Valdo has, has shown through his life. So let me, uh, let's take a journey on uh, mediumship. What is mediumship? For example, the, uh, the definition here is from the Spirit Guide and Manual that's in the book, The Consoler. The very first one that's even in highlights, or in bold, I should say, it's a gift from God, right? Mediumship is a gift from God. That's not something that we go to school for it. Yes, we definitely have to learn about it. We have to practice it. We have to do a lot of studying and reading. And But there's no you know, uh, college for mediumship. There's no, again, the, the way we identify or we understand mediumship is that it's a gift from God. Its result or its main demonstration is to put us in direct contact with the spiritual world or with discarnate spirits. Therefore, the word medium, which, by the way, the word medium was created by Alan Kardec. He was the first author that used the word medium before, right? So as we know, he created the word to become this medium or this mediary or mediator between the physical world and the spiritual world. That's why he defined the word medium. However, as we can see here, it could be used to, it could be employed in good or evil ways. It doesn't really have it. Like everything else, we have we can make a good use of it, or we can make not so good use of it. Correct? That's in the uh, what is spiritism, and Emmanuel complements mediumship by telling us it's the light that would spread through the flesh, right? Showcasing the capabilities. It's one of the most beautiful opportunities for us, for mediums, to have or to progress and to achieve redemption, because it's called it's a call to action. It's an invitation. For us to really work on it, to act upon it, right? So when we look at this, mediumship, it's an attribute of the spirit. Anybody, all of us, we're all mediums. We all have the ability to sense this influence from the spiritual world. We all have the ability to sense, to acknowledge, and to perceive, right? What our angels, where the angels, what our spirit guides are telling us. That's what mediumship is. And uh, I'll take a pause here because I said a lot. Folks, if there are any questions, please feel free to throw them on the uh, chat. If it's you know, relevant to the topic I'm talking, I can go back and forth and answer them. If you have an access, access to or at the very least, we can tackle them at the end of the uh, conversation here. Okay? So we touched on mediumship. What about mediums? Let's see what uh, what we understand by you know mediums. So as I mentioned right before, Everyone, you know, feels the influence or very spirit in any degree can be considered yourself a medium, right? We all have this capability to perceive the influence and all that. By no shape or form, this is a privilege. Mediums are not better people. They're not worse people at all. They're just people like everybody else, like you and I, like everyone else, right? So there's no privilege in mediumship. On the contrary, as we understand we spiritists understand mediumship as a call to action. It's for us to use that faculty, to use that you know, uh, uh, under, to use that knowledge towards the goodwill of others, towards the ben the uh, benefits of others, towards the charitable co you know contributions and all that. That's exactly what Divaldi has done for the last eighty plus years of his life, my friends. I kid you not, eighty plus years. He's been using his mediumship towards the benefit of others, which really categorizes him as a medium, as a very prolific medium, not only because of years he's been practicing mediumship, but also how many folks his mediumship has touched, either in the form of the books that he's written or he wrote, or his talks, his meetings, his you know, articles that he's written, his covers. I mean, there's a lot of influence, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of impact from the influence of Divaldo's, Divaldo's mediumship in all of our lives, as we can say. And obviously, there are many types of mediumships and many types of manifestations as well. So I'll show you a couple of things here as we go through. But I want you to take a maybe a little, you know, walk into memory lane. Or if you have never been exposed to any mediumship books, anything about mediumship, this is a good uh, summary what mediumship is and what mediums or what mediums are what mediums do 
so to speak. So back to um, uh, Divaldo here and some of his uh, mediumship materializations. So, folks, this happened in 1977. So roughly 45 years ago, Divaldo, through the spirit guide Sheila, offered participants this white rose or materialized white rose that if you're not following, if this is the first time you get in contact with spiritism, this may sound to you like a Blade Runner movie or a science fiction movie. And it is not. This is the uh, confirmed and recorded materialistic mediumship meeting where Divaldo, through the uh, spirit guide Sheila, produced those roses and he gave them to the participants of that, uh, uh, of that setting. Again, these pictures are from 1977, so the quality is not the best, as you can as you can imagine. But we can even see some ectoplasm leaving Divaldo's ears and nose from that meeting. And the other picture you see, those are the roses. Divaldo here is in one in the middle, giving roses to all the participants from that uh, from that meeting or from that gathering. Why did I want to bring this here? Because Divaldo's mediumship is so vast. It's so prolific. It, there, there's so much around his mediumship that we can definitely categorize him as one of the most prolific mediums of all times. That's why I wanted to bring this so we all know some of the things that he's done beyond his books, beyond his talks, beyond him as a person and so forth. Okay? So uh, let's continue with Divaldo's biography here. So on September 7th of 1947, okay, for the uh, folks on the room here that are good in math, how many years ago? 75 years ago, right? So 75 years ago, along with his uh, dear and faithful friend, Nilsson Pereira, they both founded or co-founded the Path of Redemption Spiritist Center, or in Portuguese, Centro Espírita Caminho da Redenção. 75 years ago, they both founded this Spiritist Center. In 1949, Divaldo started to channel some messages from the spiritual world, telling him about his mission, really exposing him, right, or, or exposing the, mess, the mission to him, what he was supposed to be doing. What are some of the things that he planned in this life, in this incarnation, to be done? For example... In this view that he had, it was almost like a dream that he could see things very vividly as he talks and he mentions in some of his talks. He saw many children running around and running against him and running to him and talking to him and all that. And then when he removed himself from the vision, from this, you know, quote unquote dream, he could see that there was an old guy those children were running to. And that old man, was himself. But he was at a very young age at the time, 20 plus years of age. I mean, 20 years of age. And then uh, when you looked at, oh, that's me, you know, 50 years from now. And then he, through clairvoyance, through clairaudience, he started to really listen to that voice. They would tell him, Divaldo, your life here should be dedicated to caring for children in need. That's the direction he was given when he was 20 years of age. Folks, I'm not sure about you, but when I was 20 years of age, I, you know, I wanted to do conquer the world. I wanted to, oh my God, I wanted to do this and that and this and that. I wanted to do this. And again, Divaldo's life has been very unique in a way that since early age, since he was five years old, he's been exchanging communication with the spiritual world. He's been you know, told some of the things that he wanted to do or he planned to do for this incarnation. And when he was 20, he already knew what he was going to do for the next uh, 50 plus years of his life. Or as we know now, 75 plus year of his life. So here are some of the pictures of Divaldo in the Mansion of the Way. We'll touch on what, you know, the organization that he founded. But I wanted to uh, maybe spend a few seconds here to show you guys, some of the messages, and obviously you can go to the internet and search Duval, Divaldo's and children. You see hundreds of pictures of him spending time with children 
of him teaching children, of him even playing, which is obviously his age right now doesn't let him to do a lot of these things any longer. But you see some of the old pictures, black and white, of him spending a lot of time with the uh, with these children that is so much they care and love so much. Okay. Uh, continuing with his life, in 1952, they both founded Mansion of the Way, which is this organization that uh, has been housing and caring for orphan children ever since. Today, they still do that, both from in the form of bringing those children in, where they can spend all day in this institution. Some will live there, some will spend the entire day, come back to their parents' life. So parents will drop them in the morning, will pick them up in the end of the afternoon, or sometimes even after dinner, for parents that need more help, more assistance. It's a very large organizational complex or institutional complex, over 20,000 acres, 44 buildings, and that every day they care for over 3,000 children and teenagers. 3,000, my friends. That's a number that should strike, right? All of us. 3,000 children and teenagers every single day are assisted from the organization. In addition to that, 2,000 adults are assisted daily through various programs. And I'll go into those programs in a minute. To this date, this is a pre-pandemic, by the way. To this date, over 30,000 boys and girls have received education, care, vocational assistance or vocational help from Mansion of the Way schools. So 30,000 plus children have been assisted by the Mansion of the Way. Devald himself adopted and raised over 600 sons and daughters. 600 sons and daughters. He adopted, you know, and then they become his children, so to speak. It's interesting that when Divaldo talks to his, his children, they all call him uncle. They don't call him dad, they call him uncle because obviously, right, 600 children through all, you know, many, many years and decades that he's been really serving uh, these kids or these uh, folks that are in, in much, much need. So if we flip on to his life, as a spiritist writer, there's some phenomenal numbers here that I'd love to share with you. For example, he is psychographed or channeled over 250 works, books, and so forth. 104 of these titles were translated to four, uh, 16 languages, rather. So 100 plus of his books touched over 16 languages. Way more countries, obviously, as we know. Over 7 million copies were sold. 7 million copies were sold. More than 217 spiritual writers have authored messages through his channel. 200 plus spiritist authors have worked with Divaldo to uh, uh, pr produce a book or to produce some works. And this one here, from 1992, and if you're following us and you happen to speak Spanish, this is the title of the book, Asia Las Estrellas, or, or that's how the stars uh, uh, were born, I think. That's the title in English. And when he published this, Spanish was not a language that he knew. Divog does not speak Spanish. And he wrote this book in something that we call automatic writing in a language that was not of his own. It's the first time he wrote a book or he wrote a, a uh, he published something that was in a language that he did not know anything about it. He was, an, you know, non-literate in Spanish. He is still non-literate in Spanish, as we know. And then even more surprising or more astonishing, you see on my next slide, which is these messages that we call them xenoglossy or the capability to really have access to a language that you don't you know dominate you don't understand so for example the one on the left is the one i was written in french by the way the father doesn't speak french either that's a message in french 
than Leon Denis, a spiritist author and a spiritist, you know, from, you know, Kardec's time or Kardec's era, wrote through Divaldo in French, and still Divaldo doesn't speak French. And then even more so, I invite you to read, or maybe take a look at the one on the right, that's written in English, right? My dear friends, God bless you. Considering the difficulties and the sorrows that fall upon our civilization, yada, 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 he continues the message. It's a, it's a beautiful message by the Joanna the Angelus, his spirit guide. But then here, I'll bring in something even more interesting for you guys. Take a look, if you, you can see on the bottom, that's uh, not typed, but that's uh, like computer uh, uh, fonts. Can you see that? That's actually reversed, isn't it? Can you see it? Why is that so? Because this message was not only written in English, which was or which is a language that you know Mr. Franco does not understand or dominate. It was also written the other way around. This is how it was written, from the right to the left, so that when you put that in the mirror, you could actually read it. That's the message, my friends. I'll read it to you. My dear friends, God bless you. Considering the difficulties and sorrows that fall upon our civilization, rich in technology but poor in love, let us unite in a crusade of goodness, spreading the light of immortality so that we can banish the dark shadows of materialism responsible for the downfall of modern society. Love is our guiding light and spirit faith. And spirit faith is life in lighthouse, showing us the way to safety. United in the same ideal of truth with the blessings of Christ, we shall fulfill our superior compromise with life. Joanna the Angelus. So he wrote this message reversed, meaning he started from the right to the left in a language that he did not know, or he does not know still today. Again, I'm not sure about you folks, but if I try to write something from the right to the left in the language that I know, English, for example, it would be very difficult. Imagine a language that we don't know. Again, a, a, a bulletproof point here of a bulletproof evidence of mediumship, of his channel, right? Uh, capabilities to really drive or produce books and so forth. So Divaldo is a phenomenon when it comes to uh, his works. We know that. But let's take a, maybe a, a, a few minutes here on Mansion of the Way because there's so many things, uh, so many interesting things about Mansion of the Way that if you ever have an opportunity to go to Brazil, try to spend some time there, maybe a day or two, visit. I know it's the northeast part of Brazil. It's in the, in the, in the uh, Salvador, the city. But it's, a, it's an amazing building, an amazing uh, work, so to speak, the collection of multiple buildings that offer amazing care to really individuals who are in dire need sometimes, social, economical, mentally, psychologically, support-based and all that. So some facts or some uh, interesting things about Mention of the Way. Uh, Divaldo uh, created or, or founded this uh, maternity, Marietta de Sousa Pereira, uh, his sister's name. And so far, actually pre-pandemic, I should say, uh, we had over 6,000 childbirths provided here. No cesarean, no C-sections, but only natural birth, where they had the, uh, the companion of a doula, for example, someone that can really assist those women giving birth to their children. And if you're familiar with the situation in Brazil, who, which is a developing country, a lot of these women will probably give birth to their kids, sometimes even halfway to the hospital because they couldn't get to the hospital. Sometimes they have no conditions, they have no hospital beds available for them. So this has given, or this work has given access to quality health care to these women. And by the way, if they are there, going towards childbirth, and there are complications, they also have an ambulance that can take them to an emergency care, trauma center, and so forth. I know that here sometimes we take a lot of things for granted because we have access to health care, 
decent healthcare no matter where we are, but down there is very different, my friends. So this work here shows uh, or, or really brings a much more humane condition for women to be able to give childbirths right, to their kids. So not only that, but uh, some of the things that had happened, a healthcare condition, they have a healthcare center, a mini hospital, so to speak, that folks can get healthcare, ambulatory, as a pharmacy, well-stocked pharmacy. There's some folks can go in there, they have access to medication and things like that. Uh, again, some of these folks wouldn't even be able to go to the hospital because it's too far for them or no public transportation available so they can take them there. So by having or providing access to healthcare inside the mansion of the way has really benefited so many people, so many folks that are now able to, to live much better lives than before. Not only from a healthcare perspective, but from an educational perspective, uh, National Way offers assistance right after you know the birth, right after in a crèche uh, um, a setup where parents can really bring their kids and they can be assisted. Look at the uh, those little babies on the picture top left. Then as they grow, they have pre-K schools and kindergarten through 12th grade education provided to them. Not only that. But also mention of the way offers vocational schools teaching some of these kids, for example, uh, carpentry skills, uh, IT or computer skills, and other sewing and uh, English and a, a bunch of other capabilities that they're teaching these adolescents or these pre adults to be able to join a, a, a professional life once they graduate from mention of the way to be able to self support themselves and their families. Again. 30,000, my friends, 30,000 children have passed through these schools and vocational, K-12 and vocational schools in the uh, mention of the way. As a speaker, Mr. Franco has uh, spoken more than 12,000 talks and lectures and conferences from all over the world, 1,100 cities and 70 different countries he has visited to spread the light of spiritism, to really talk about spiritism. He has done over 300 interviews in various TVs and radio stations throughout the world. And in Brazil, where he's from, obviously, he's been interviewed over a thousand times. One thousand times he's been interviewed. He's recognized as the uh, uh, religious world religious leader by the United Nations. He's participated in several meetings in the UN, both here in New York City as well as in Vienna, Austria. Many, many accolades from Mr. Franco, from his uh, spiritist uh, speaking uh, journey, right? That has uh, uh, conveyed or has spanned over 50 plus years. And he's been visiting countries and other cities and etc. If I look at, for example, something else that Mr. Franco founded, uh, the PCNU movement, which is not a movement against anything in particular, it's a religious, there's no connection to any religion, but rather a gathering of people in favor of peace, goodness, order, fraternity, to name a few. So we all gather, we talk, there's some, some conversations, talks, there's some gathering, some, some uh, workshops around peace, around how much we have to not only bring peace to our hearts and minds, but to others, those around us. And his phrase on the bottom middle, middle of the slide shows the peace that begins with me will foster peace in the world. So if we'd like to see a world which with more, much more peace, the peace has to start with all of us. And that movement has gone beyond Brazil. We've had you know, instances of here as well in the United States, Europe, Asia, and so forth. Many, many different locations of that you know, peace and union movement. I also want to bring some accolades and some honors received uh, by Mr. Franco. 572 uh, have, honors have been received from all over the world. I just picked a couple that might, or at least to me, stood out. The uh, Doctor of Humanities, Honoris Causa in Spiritual and Psychic Sciences from the International College of Psychic and Spiritual Sciences. The Medel de Reconnaissance from the uh, Humanist Institute of Paris which is one of the most prestigious institutes of, uh, in France. And the uh, honoris causa doctors from the University of Bahia in Brazil, the state where he's from. There's several pictures 
where we can see Dr. Frank or you know, our friend here, Divaldo, receiving some of the accolades and uh, medals and, and things like that. When I look at, for example, you may be asking yourself, mention of the way, 30,000 people, 3,000 kids every day, healthcare, this, 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 this. How is everything or how is all that funded? Right? I mean, how does he have access to all these money to make all these things? And so it's very simple. All the work that he's ever done, every dollar, every penny of his sales of books, DVDs, magazines, and so forth, or sometimes stocks that we are able to see Divaldo in person, all the proceedings from those are go through his social work. Activities, assistential activities from Mention of the Way. So, for example, if we look at some of his books, you may have written, you may have uh, read some of his books. You may have them maybe by you right now, or maybe at your end table or your nightstand. And one that I, I'd say, that's why it's my first one here on the left that I have with me at all times, right? It's right here, is Happy Life. Because those are very short messages that really give us good access to a good thought at the heat of the moment, at that opportunity. So it's right there. It can fit in your pocket. You can fit in your pocketbook, or right? if you wear a pocketbook, or maybe in you know a, a big pocket. Again, so many books around psychology, around obviously spiritism, around inner transformation, works of Joanna the Angelus, books on mediumship, books on health and consciousness, books on talking about the future times ahead, the new era that awaits us, planitude. Joanna D'Angelo is his, his spirit guide. There's a book that talks about her biography, what she's done. Again, so many things that we have seen. For example, a book in psychiatry, the connections between psychiatry, psychiatry and spiritism, books on the afterlife, spiritual disturbances, so many different topics and themes on his books. And once again, every time we buy one of these books, Every time we contribute to one of his talks, every time we contribute to anything that Divaldo produces, we are also helping him fund all that assistential work that he's been doing, not only from Mansion of the Way, but also touching so many hearts and so many minds from all over the world. And if you're interested in more, in 2019, uh, there was a, a biography movie that were that was shot, Divaldo, The Messenger of Peace. And that movie, uh, I don't believe it's available right now. It was available uh, from for Prime as well as um, uh, Fandango, some other streaming service. But I, I checked before uh, last week. I couldn't find you know streaming available here. But this book talks about his legacy, all his accomplishments. And how much so Divaldo is as a person, as a human being, and someone that we aspire to follow his footsteps one day. With that, my time is for now. Angie, I'd love if you have any questions or answers, anything that I can help uh, uh, folks uh, from Divaldo's biography or any works that any work that he's published that could serve of any help. I'd love to uh, to bring to a conversation here. You're on mute, Angie. Today is the technical problems day. Let's uh, let's call it that. <laughs> yeah, today's the official technical problem day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! But I'm glad your your mic uh, worked worked well in the end. So, my friends, after this beautiful presentation, Flavio is here to answer any questions, any doubts. If you have any comments, please put in the chat and then he will be able to, to talk about it. So why they don't, they don't write, Flavio? Uh, thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful. And you know, we all know a lot about Divaldo. It's a blessing to live in the US because we have a, a much closer contact with Divaldo. I have so many pictures with him. And um, when I send this to Brazil, for example, my friends are mesmerized because it's so difficult to get close to Divaldo in Brazil. 
he goes to places, it's like 2,000 people. So he's surrounded by a huge security. And of course, nowadays, uh, 95 years old, even, even more. So we are really, truly blessed to have this closer contact with him. So we have a comment here. So let me read. So Gina says, uh, try to look up a peace and you movement. The page on Facebook not updated since 2020. How can we connect? Yeah, it, it is the page, Gina. Unfortunately, because of COVID, I don't think there's been any uh, any of these uh, encounters since COVID hit. Right, we've all gone through a pandemic for the last uh, two years. Uh, my understanding is that the movement's going to continue going, and the once things you know open up more and more. Uh, but I'll, I'll suggest follow that page and uh, reach out. Like, uh, for example, Andrea Marcello from Florida are very connected with that as well, Suzanne as well, and some others. So uh, that's my understanding. That movement is going to continue once we get things open up more and borders and, and everything else. Right? And obviously, Divaldo can travel given his age and so forth. Yes, yes, exactly. It's a beautiful, beautiful movement. Uh, I was in the last one here in Miami. It was really, really nice. We even have the the famous DJ. What's his name? The Brazilian guy that... Uh, he. Alok, yes, yes, super friendly. He was very beautiful. He mentioned also about uh, his uh, involvement in fraternity without borders. Very, very, very beautiful. So, yes, this movement has to continue helping all of us around the world. So, what else, uh, Flavio? How how was the first time you ever? Sajivaldo in person. When was in person. it? Uh, in so person. In person in the same the same setting, I should say. Not in person talking to each other. So in person, I think I was maybe 15 or 16 years of age. I was uh, in the youth group of my spiritist center. Really? Yeah, 30 years ago. And uh, we had a chance to go to the uh, Juventus uh, um, uh, soccer team uh, uh, club, right? And uh, Divaldo was speaking there. And we all went to, uh, to see him speak. And I think at that time, there were over 2,000 people uh, uh, there in the, uh, in the room uh, hearing wow. him speak. Uh, so in Brazil, as Angie mentioned, you can't even go nowhere close near him because yeah. so many folks uh, uh, want to get close to him and, and see him and all that. So again, to me, when I read some of the gospel uh, pages about Jesus, the woman who had went crazy to, to touch Jesus and that's Divaldo in Brazil. Everybody wants to get close to him, to talk to him, to maybe spend a few minutes with him. And as Angie mentioned, here when he comes, we have an audience of four or five hundred people in the uh, in the event. It, it's 10x that in Brazil at least. In Europe as well, when he goes to Spain or Portugal, it's like two, three thousand people that go to uh, some of his uh, some of his talks. So that was my very first time that I had, had a chance to to watch him speak live in the same setting. This is what was close to 1990 or something, 1991. Wow. Something. So you are you are from a spiritist family. You mentioned 16 yeah, years my, of age. My parents actually met in a spiritist center. Oh so wow! Wow, very good, very good. So when was the, the first time you saw Divaldo in the US? Oh, that was in uh, 1999, I think, for in New York City, actually. For, yeah, so John Zerio was there and it's about, a bunch of other folks were there. That was the very first time I had a chance to see Divaldo in person and talk to him and spend a few minutes with him as well. Wow. I think, Angie, we're, we're, only, gonna, we're only gonna realize what kind of spirit Divaldo or this spirit is? Divaldo is in this incarnation. Long time from now, I think now we have only a glimpse of all he's accomplished. But the uh, the the uh, the knowledge or the uh, the enlightenment of this spirit, we're only going to be able to see and realize maybe decades from now. All the yeah. impact he has is 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 uh, is given to folks and uh, all the works that has really contributed to. A lot of you know well-being from people and so forth. So when I look at this, uh, yes, he's here with us. Maybe a few more years, you know, God knows, God willing, right? 
Yeah. But I think we're only going to be able to really see what kind of spirit Devaldo is maybe later because it's just it's, oh. that man's a machine. You know, it, it's for those of us who are you know close with him uh, that spend time with him. And you know, for example, when he comes to the East Coast, I do help him with some translation, simultaneous translation, and things like that. So I have a chance to spend more time with him, pick him up at the airport, drop him off at the hotel, go to yeah. dinner, do all those things. And the guy's always working. He, every minute he has, he's working. He's, yeah. uh, I, for example, I've ridden on a train from Boston to New York, you know, side by side with Duvaldo. He's opened up his laptop. This is when he was like 90, right? He opened up his, maybe a little before he was nine years old. He opened up his laptop, started to really send emails. Like, he's like 90, almost nine years old, I remember. Technology, yes. no problem, doing that, talking. And every minute that he had, three minutes, he used towards the benefit of others. Yeah, no, it, it's amazing. His energy is so amazing. I, I moved to the U.S. In, permanently in 2001, and then I met him uh, that, that the same year. I met him, no, I saw him. I only was able to talk to him many, many years later when I was uh, working in the Tri-State Federation. But uh, anyway, he is always like this, working, 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 and so much energy. And he's always like uh, doing things and thinking about things. And that, that's, that's why you said he's 95. So right now he's 95. And he works almost every day. Now they have a, a, a mention of the way, Mansão do Caminho TV, where Divaldo is almost every day giving lectures. He has yep. classes. He has a special he still, programs. Yeah, he, keeps, he, still, he keeps on publishing. He keeps on every yes. month almost yes. every book that comes out. It, it's amazing. Publishing. It's amazing. I have a, a, a small story. We have uh, we have six minutes. Guys, if you want to send any messages, please uh, interrupt us. We will love to read your comments and, and your questions. But while it doesn't happen, I was around 16, uh, lived in Rio. My No one in my family is a spiritist. The whole family is Catholic. And um, my parents had a store in front of the military school. And uh, we were almost closing the store. It was like a 6.30, we closed at 7. And we started seeing a huge amount of people going inside this, the military school. That was gigantic. And then some of these people coming in the store to buy certain things. And, uh, and we asked, is, is some kind of party happening? And they said, oh, there is this famous medium called Divaldo Franco giving a lecture today and we were like wow i was like oh, medium i want to go to see but it, it was so funny because in that time we had the opportunity we were right there but uh, we didn't know and i remember getting so like wow this guy must be very famous i didn't know anything about him and uh, when i think about it, like my goodness that time i was only 16 he already attracted so many people. Nowadays, he needs to to go to the Maracanã Stadium to see his lecture. I saw, I saw a comment from Mary Ramirez. She said that check out Dr. Bernie uh, Siegel with Divaldo Frank. Actually, when they met in Norwalk, Connecticut, I had a chance to be there. So mm -hmm, me they, too. Uh, medicine and spirituality and all that. Divaldo has met. If you're into spiritualism or spirituality, he's already met. And had you know lectures or talks with Dr. Bernie Siegel, Raymond Moody Jr., Mark Baker. All these authors have spent time with Divaldo in uh, different settings or different uh, opportunities. So it, yeah. it is really uh, uh, again. I didn't have a chance to go into a lot more details, but if you go and search for that, there's so many opportunities where Divaldo had a chance to meet some of these uh, esteemed authors from many many different places, uh, especially here, right in the United States and the spiritualist movement that we have. Yes, and, okay. and this meeting was, was very special because uh, Givaldo mentioned how much he already admired Dr. Bernie Siegel. And when they and met that's him, that's Dr. That's Bernie that's Siegel invited that's him that's for a dinner in his house and he was feeling so honored. So it was very, very, very nice. It was, it was a beautiful event, very beautiful. And there are lots of uh, YouTube uh, videos about that uh, that was a whole day uh, of conference. It was really, really nice. 
Very good, my friends. Uh, we have three minutes. So thank you so much. Thank you, Flavia. It was beautiful. I absolutely enjoy the messages that you brought to us, the real messages. I don't even know how you found them. I love the mirror one because we already knew, but I had never actually seen the message. So it was really, really nice. We have another comment here from Monica. So it's definitely a privilege to have met him in person and to have his books autographed a blessing. Yes, exactly. It's, we are so lucky. We are so lucky. And uh, thank you so much. So thank you, everybody. It was really, really nice. Thank you so much for the research, Flavio. And I uh, would like to invite you to do our final prayer. Absolutely. Thank you. Folks, let us rejoice. Heavenly creator of all beings in the universe, we're all here together, together in thy name, to get to know a little bit about the life and the works of one of your messengers, Devaldo Franco. We in this time would like to thank for all the blessings we have received, for all the help, the assistance, the push that has come through us or towards us. We also like to, uh, to, to thank our Mother and Father God, for all the difficulties, for all the problems, for all the obstacles in our lives, because we know through spiritism, we know through the Gospels that they will make us better spirits at the end. But sometimes it's difficult to overcome them, and that's why we're here to ask you to give us the strength necessary to continue with our lives, to continue with our missions, to continue guided through the gospel, through our brother, Jesus. And for you, Jesus, a spark of love, a spark of your love, rather, could embrace the whole earth. We're asking you to really touch all of the souls, all of our brothers and sisters who are suffering at this time. Embrace them with your blessings. Give them, give them the strength. Give them the light that's needed sometimes for them to see the end of the tunnel. And once again, Jesus, continue with us, enlightening our minds, bringing peace to our hearts, giving us more opportunities together to congregate amongst friends, to study and to rejoice in your name. Amen. So be it. Very nice, very nice. Thank you so much, Flavio. It was really, Thank really you, good. Thank you, everybody. Flavio, we'll put you in the background just for a little bit, and then I will talk to you again. Thank you so much. So my friends, we are finishing another beautiful Sunday lecture. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. And I would like to remind you to follow our page on Facebook. We are still online here in Conscious Living, but we have lectures on Tuesdays and Sundays, and we have studies throughout the week. So if you are interested in participating in some of our studies, please check out our page, and then you can join us in the private studies that will help you so much to know a little bit deeper about the Spiritism. So with that, I would like to thank you all, and I hope to see you soon next week. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.